I don't know enough. Seriously, I'm sitting here explaining the Salesforce stuff and pretending to know everything. Well, I don't. And it's fine. The thing is that even experienced developers sometimes cage themselves thinking that they don't know enough. You can be a developer for 20 or more years and this thought will never go away. Today I solved a very difficult problem and consider yourself a genius. Tomorrow of you are googling the order of execution and surprise that a validation rule is called before you trigger. Sounds like imposter syndrome, doesn't it, when you doubt your achievements and think you're a fraud? Probably, but this is a constant state of being a software developer. You see, this field is very vast, there is no way to know everything. But if you do, you're definitely a fraud. So it's confession time. I don't know the order of execution by heart, and I'm still googling the batch interface because I can't remember it. I'm not sure if I know the concept of open authorization. So seems like I'm a bad Salesforce developer, right? Shame on me. I know sometimes you post on LinkedIn about really cool feature for SQL queries, and you get a dozen comments saying that people knew this before they were born. So you lock yourself in a room for a month, study every single Salesforce documentation page by heart, go to an interview and told you're an idiot. You come back home, you lock yourself in your room for two months, study every possible interview question, go to an interview, get a job and all you do for the next year is create custom fields and adding them to existing SQL queries that are scattered across thousands of different Apex classes and methods. But it doesn't occur to you that maybe the SQL queries can be combined into a selector layer, where they'll all be easier to manage, or maybe even have a standard list of fields to retrieve. But at the same time prevent overfetching so as not to load the application. You don't think about it, because it's about a different set of knowledge that you don't have yet. And yet at this stage of your career it seems unfair. You know all the documentation by heart, you know every possible interview question, you correct everybody in the meetings because you know they're all idiots. And when you don't know something, it's easy to explain, I'm not familiar with their business, it's something custom, you know, they're all idiots, as I said, so it doesn't really make sense. And therefore, why am I still a junior? Because it's all about years, years of experience and suffering. Maybe. Or maybe you don't feel like an imposter yet. And here's my point. You see better improvement when you do feel like an imposter. You start thinking about the things you never thought about, you solve real problems, you develop the ability to deliver what's needed. Not what you think is cool, that's two completely different things, but what is actually part of the task. And most importantly, you learn how to ask the right questions. Let's say you have the following task. Develop a structure that will receive emails and distribute them to available support specialists. It will also have a countdown to determine how long it took to resolve the issue, not including the waiting time from the client. You clearly defined a technical stack, email to case and omnichannel. And for the countdown, you implement custom trigger logic with custom formulas and probably even custom component. You will not reconsider this decision later, because you already put a lot of efforts and there is no point in going back. You think. But let's go back and ask a simple question. What does Rosier case to the client support specialist mean? How do I define it? And you get an answer that they can assign it themselves, you just need to somehow distinguish those that are not yet assigned and existing ones. Do you still think that the omnichannel is needed here? I don't. The standard case assignment rules will be more than enough to accommodate this requirement. As for the crazy idea for countdown, Salesforce has a great tool called entitlement process that can make your job a lot easier. But why didn't you find it sooner? Because you didn't want to find it. And you didn't want to ask any extra questions, cause it's kind of clear what the requirements say. Well, welcome to the club. Requirements and expectations do not always match. The thing is, you're not yet at this stage of your career when you're questioning your decisions. And even if you do, you cannot foresee the consequences of your decisions and you cannot prevent making bad decisions. You're a confident Salesforce developer and that's maybe where the problem lies. Don't get me wrong, it's great to be confident, but it doesn't mean you're always right or wrong. It's two completely different life variables. Here is your confidence and here is your rightness and wrongness, if that's the thing. So, okay, be it, be confident, you know? But all I want you to have is a desire to learn. Not a desire to know everything, but a desire to learn, predict, and search for, inf for information. Search for information, that is the important one. And you might say I'm old-fashioned, which I'm probably uh, am, but I would say use Google. It's important to use Google at such status of your career. And yeah, if something is really unclear, 
ChatGPT Gemini LLMs are right here, but avoid getting a full answer right away. But let's look at it from another perspective. You have a crazy desire to know everything. You still don't doubt your decisions because you have a strong trailhead base. You're genius, unsurprised, inimitable, irreplaceable, unique. You learned unit tests yesterday, went through the entire trailhead twice, no, five times. You read it to your son like a lullaby at night. The next day you explain it to your colleagues so you know they know who the genius is here. There's just one problem. It's not really unit tests. It's integration tests. Do I think the terminology is important. No, I don't. Do I believe what's behind the terminology is important? Absolutely. You know my concept, you cannot be a Salesforce developer without being a software engineer. And that's what this is all about. You cannot be a senior Salesforce developer knowing one small area. Yeah, sorry, Salesforce is a damn small area. The bar is much lower than in any other areas. You are senior when you are capable of looking at a Salesforce not only from inside of the ecosystem, but when you have a strong programming base and you are able to look at a problem from the outside. And you know what? I get it. Who am I? Some no-name who tells you how to live? Yeah, you know, I get it. I get it. So let me bring in some extra forces. Hey Igor, thanks for joining me today, it's nice to have you here. So you're as the kind of person who interacts with developers of all levels on a regular basis, I thought you might be a right person to ask. What makes a Salesforce developer a senior Salesforce developer? Is it really just about a Salesforce ecosystem or maybe some sort of broader knowledge? Hi Andri. So, what I think that senior developers should be able to do is to take on any project end-to-end. What does it mean? It means that if any client comes to you with any type of business problem, you should be able to go and solve this business problem using some kind of technical tools, or you should be able to assemble a team that's going to be able to solve this problem. Now, what it means is that it can be Apex, it can be Flow, it can be LWC, Visual Force, or it can be no code at all, because sometimes not doing the project is actually the right solution because the client actually doesn't need to have the project done, right? Or it can be something that is outside of the Salesforce, right? So Salesforce is never just this, this island that is disconnected from anything. And Salesforce is also never the right solution for any type of the problem that you might get. So a true senior developer should be able to do anything inside of the Salesforce and understand how also to do stuff outside of the Salesforce, which means that senior developer in Salesforce should be what we actually call a software engineer to engineer a complete solution for the business. That makes perfect sense to me. Uh, but one more thing, what about algorithms and data structures? Do we need to learn them? Do we need to learn them by heart? So the algorithms, okay, I think that you don't need to know and grind those algorithms and know by heart how to traverse a tree or how to build a graph or black red tree or whatever. But I do think that you need to be able to identify some problems and apply algorithms on them. So if you're a self-taught developer, for example, and you have never ever touched any type of algorithms, then whenever you're gonna get this problem in real life, you will not be able to identify that this problem, this technical problem that's thrown on you, needs to be solved in the most efficient way using some kind of algorithm. So if you're a self-taught or if you have never touched algorithms at all, I really recommend you to go and actually have a look at them and just to see what kind of problems they solve. Just to see what kind, how you can apply them in Salesforce and what kind of problems you can solve using those algorithms. But you don't need to know them by heart and you don't need to study all of them uh, just in case, right? Uh, what I think that whenever you're going to see the problem, if you can identify the right algorithm to solve this problem, you also should be able to figure out the algorithm itself. So in short, it all comes down to being able to identify the right problem and find the right solution for that. And for that, you need to know what kind of solutions are out there. Great. So that being said, what do you think the roadmap could be for a Salesforce developer to call themselves a senior? Let's say 
I know everything about Salesforce and I can develop in Salesforce. So what else do I need to know? One of the key elements of a senior developer, in my opinion, are more related to the soft skills and to the leadership skills. So as a senior developer, you need to be able to take the leadership role. You need to be able to own a whole project and not just a task in this project. If you are someone who is just coding whatever tickets and, and projects and whatever, are, whatever is assigned to you, then I don't think that you are a true senior developer because you need to be able to make decisions, to influence the decisions and to influence the flow of a project to some extent. If you're never asked to join any kind of key decision making meeting, then you need to still work on your soft skills and leadership skills. Because you, as a senior developer, one of the key skills that you have is to take a project end to end and to own a project from a technical standpoint, from a business standpoint, and to be able to deliver this project to the client no matter what. And that's why the soft skills are equally and maybe sometimes even more important than your technical skills. I've seen a lot of people who have excellent soft skills and who are excellent translators between the technical, uh, the technical developers and the non-technical business people. And this is something that you want to work on. And sometimes it can be even more important than your technical skills. And that's how, in my opinion, a senior Salesforce developer should look like. So it looks like there is something more. There is Salesforce and there is something more that defines seniority. If you Google, you'll come across a roadmap like this on how to become a Salesforce developer. I actually like it. Some of the things are not relevant anymore and others are missing entirely like the principles of OPA. But I'm glad there is a section for learn how to design software, which is actually very important. It's about the obvious and upfront, Salesforce. Behind there is this kind of roadmap, about more broader, more general aspect. You might even call them cliche. Code quality, which is often overlooked, decision making, soft skills, and even leadership. And whether we like to admit it or not, those two roadmaps merge into one coherent picture of how to become senior Salesforce developer. And that's why I'm here to help you to put it together, cause as easy as it sounds, it's not. See you soon.